Hello and welcome to this video. In today's video I'm going to be walking you through the ABCs of Night Shift. This was actually a video requested in a comment so please if you have any videos you want me to make please comment them down below. I am more than happy to do videos that have been requested. Apologies if it does take me a little bit of time. I actually do a lot of these videos well in advance just to keep up with the uh, the pressures of real life and work. <laughs> So I have a confession to make. I haven't actually done a night shift in quite a number of years now. That being said, I do remember it rather vividly. In going through my rotation diaries videos, or at least the prep for them, I was reading and remembering a lot of the things rather viscerally, like the uh, the types of calls you'd make and what it was like to get into night shift mode and things like that. So whilst I don't have more recent experience, I do have experience and I do remember it relatively vividly. I want to preface all of this by saying that I worked in a relatively small hospital. It wasn't the most rural or the smallest hospital ever, but when I was doing my night shifts, we were not a tertiary centre. Um, we had one medical ward, so medical ward call would cover that, but it was spread over three or four actual physical wards of 30 odd beds. Our surgical ward call was very much the same, except we only really had three surgical like areas and it wasn't as busy. For different hospitals, you may have different expectations. So you might only be cardiology ward call, you might only be uh, orthopedic ward call. So I had a very broad experience and your mileage may vary, but hopefully this video gives you a couple of general tips because it didn't matter where I was stationed, if I was medical or surgical, I did the same. If you're interested, I do have a video on how I prepared for night shift. So what I did for meals and what I did for sleep and that sort of thing. So check it out if you're interested. But um, let's talk night shift. So night shift where I worked was either one of two shifts. It was either the 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. or it would be kind of coming in later at sort of 10 p.m. and covering until 8, 9 o'clock the next morning. Um, our day shift would end around four or five o'clock and you'd have this intermediate sort of ward call evening shift. So if you're on the night shift, the first thing you want to do when you get to work, and of course arrive on time if not a bit earlier, is to find the evening shift person and discuss and hand over what's been going on in the evenings. The evenings tend to be the busier times in my experience, but that's not to say that night shift isn't busy at all, because trust me, it can be. But have a chat to the evening shift person. Um, I used a template that I made up myself based on one that was already floating around the hospital, which I'll insert on the screen. Um, and I would ask, what are your most outstanding tasks and what are you wanting me to be aware of for the night? So say you had someone admitted and they'd been having a low grade fever all night and you just want to make sure that someone's keeping an eye on them. And so that if they do spike a fever, you can be called or you know that you're going to be called to get blood cultures and urine and blood and things like that. So once you've handed over with evening shift, hopefully there is a bit of an overlap. So you start and evening shift ends kind of in the half hour later. You can delegate the most urgent jobs that need to be done right now together. The evening shift can go and you can start your nights by yourself. What I would do if there was no massive outstanding tasks is I would actually round from ward to ward. Um, this worked for a number of reasons. One, I was able to go into the nurses, talk to the team leaders and say, hey, I'm here, do you know of anything I need to look out for? Because sometimes the nurses will monitor things. They won't uh, message you or page you about it until it's kind of at that point where, oh, something needs to be done now. So for example, if it was a post-operative patient, they had been rumbling about pain, nurses were giving Panadol and Nurofen because that's all that was charted and they had a suspicion that overnight they might need something more, so breakthrough pain wise. I might actually preemptively chart something as a once only, so a stat dose of something. So they didn't have to contact me at 2, 3 a.m. or if I was in the middle of something else. So those little things can help. Uh, the nurses always did have the best food as well <laughs> on night shift. So I would often go from ward to ward and graze and I would call it my snack around. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, so when I was medical ward call, I would go, like I said, I think we had one, two, three, four wards, three or four different actual physical wards. So I would go from one to the other to the other and try and preempt it. From there, as I got pages, I'd respond to them immediately if I had the time, mind you. Um, and I would write down the time I got the page, the time I took the call, 
the patient to the location, what the issue was and what the action is that was needed. Um, you may get a call about anything. It may be a patient's in pain, a patient can't sleep, a patient has blood tests that are due, so such as warfarin or INR testing. There's a lot of different reasons you'd be called. Your job on night shift is just to keep everything afloat. You're putting out small fires, you're not changing management unless it drastically needs to be changed for some reason. The hardest thing I found being on night shift was carrying the Met pager or the emergency pager. Um, and you were expected to attend all of the Met calls, obviously. Often you were the first one there and I built a lot of confidence and I built a lot of my team leadership skills doing this, but I'm not gonna deny it, it was terrifying. <laughs> so I found the beginning of my shift was usually the busiest. So that's when you get a big flood in of pages and it makes sense. The beginning of your shift being 8 p.m. and you know, middle of your shift being in the 1 to 4 a.m. type area, most people are asleep, you would hope. And when people are asleep, there's not a lot that they'll be wanting from you. Um, mind you, that's not to say that people weren't awake one night, they certainly were. So what I would do, like I said, is I would write down my pages as they came sequentially and then I would try and prioritize. So I would highlight ones that I need to do now, um, rotating colors through the night. But I'm a little bit weird. This may not make any sense. It's kind of my system. Um, but I would split them into three categories. Cat one, do now. Cat two, do when I can. And cat three, do before the end of the night. So cat one might be someone's complaining of severe pain. Someone's spiking a fever and needs you to chart antibiotics and take cultures. A cat two might be Someone needs IV antibiotics, but their cannula is blown and it's due in the next hour. A cat too might also be someone's in quite a bit of pain. It sounds cruel to leave someone in pain, but it's not life or death in most instances. Um, so if you did have a life or death situation going on, you would then go to cat two. And cat three was kind of everything else. Thankfully, most places have electronic records, which makes life so much easier because I cannot tell you how much of my internship was spent rewriting charts. Um, we did have electronic records for notes, but not for um, prescriptions at that time. Once that changed, oh, my notes got so much easier because you weren't trying to find the chart, you weren't trying to get new paper if the chart was full, um, you weren't trying to, you know, go from ward to ward to ward. You could actually sit in one place and like rechart things or. No, it was it's so good if you've got electronic records, like top notch. So what do you do in the not so busy times? Well, I ate, <laughs> I drank coffee if I needed it. Um, I would continue doing my rounds, my snack rounds, again with the eating thing. Some people try and sleep. I never did and I talk about that in my how I prepared for night shift video. Basically, I wouldn't nap during the day at work, why would I nap at night during work? But that was my personal preference. If it was really, really not busy, sometimes I would help with discharge summaries because there was always a huge pile. Um, sometimes I would do other paperwork that was required. And sometimes if I was really bored, I'd head down to the emergency department and help out my registrar with admission paperwork. So in the hospital I worked at, the intern or junior house officer did ward call there would be an on-call registrar who I believe had to be on site for most uh, specialties anyway. Um, and their role was more admissions and making big changes if the intern or junior couldn't. Um, and then there was a consultant on call who was not on site 99.99% of the time. What happens if it's too busy? If you've got literally like two met calls, they've just finished and paperwork you need to do ASAP because they're being transferred, but you've got cannula that you need to do and someone can't sleep and it's 2 a.m. and someone's got fever, delegate, delegate, delegate. So again, I keep referencing my hospital, but it's the only one I have experience with. Um, there was a med ward call and a surge ward call and 90% of the time surge ward call was not particularly busy. So what would often happen is the surge ward call would either check in with med and say, hey, do you need a hand? Or Meb would reach out to surgeon and say, hey, do you have 10 minutes where you can help me with this cannula or this blood culture or whatever? And it was symbiotic. We would help each other. Um, because it was not so busy on surge ward call, I'd often sit in the med rooms and sort of help out with the little things. But that's because I was happy to do so. Not everyone is. I had the confidence by that point in my career where I could do it. Everyone's different. You're not any better or worse if you do these things. 
If you get stuck on something, such as a cannula that you can't get, a blood culture you can't get, something like that, or you just don't know what to prescribe, your registrars are very busy, but they're there to help you. As a registrar recently myself, again, it wasn't hospital based, I do appreciate that, but I'm learning too, but I do have more experience, or I did have more experience, hard to know what context I'm talking in here. And it's not that long ago we were interns or juniors either, so we remember. So don't be afraid to reach out. They may be dealing with something very, very you know, urgent and pertinent in the emergency department right then and there, or doing an admission or seeing someone very sick. That's okay. It's just asking, say, hey, look, I really need help down here. As for cannulas, and I am doing a cannula video filming it today, which will be out soon. Um, we didn't have a cannula service. We did have anaesthetic registrars on call and again working in anaesthetics I know they weren't big fans of being called for cannulas because they weren't a cannula service however if you're stuck remember the patient is the person that you need to really care about not your own ego not saying that you had one not the you know peeved off anaesthetic registrar mind you we had some lovely ones who are always happy to help but bring it back to the patient and say I've tried two three times whatever it is my registrar cannot come down, this patient needs this, otherwise they will stay unwell, can I please have help? As I alluded to, always talk to your superior if you have concerns. So as an intern, that's a junior house officer if there is one, or for both of you, the registrar. And if you happen to be the registrar on call, one, kudos, I never had that experience, so <laughs> hats off to you, I cannot help you there. But then talk to your consultant. Again, very different, but as a consultant now myself, if I had a registrar call me, which does happen in GP on a very different scale, my first response is not, oh, I mean, sometimes it is, oh my God, I'm so busy, what is it? But remember, it's the patients at the end of the day that you're caring for. People get experience on the job in our, you know, work, <laughs> and it is scary. And it, I think it pays a lot to remember to be human and remember where we all came from. It's got a little bit preachy, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so to sort of bring it all back, the ABCs of night shift, get there early, hand over, have a running list, learn how to prioritize your list. My suggestion would be continuously walking between the wards you're in charge of, um, just to pick up things early or help delegate. Reach out to those on ward call with you or night shift with you. Um, if you have downtime, there's a lot of things you can do and a lot of people you can help out. And um, look after yourself. It's rough. It really is rough. Not only the sleep and the social side and the fact that your you know, rhythm is thrown out, but being the only person on call as it feels, even though you do have backup, it's scary. It really, really is. But there are always people around to help you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, your registrar might be busy, but they might be able to come and help you. Some of our nursing staff know how to cannulate and may be more than happy to help you out if you asked. Ultimately, if you find yourself feeling unsafe, have a chat to your superior, whether that be the registrar and or the consultant, and figure out ways that you might be able to improve yourself. Night shifts can be really, really fun. Night shifts can be really, really scary. But ultimately, I truly believe that for me, it was what made me a much better doctor. It made me be able to think independently, problem solve, triage or prioritize and whilst I did not like it at the time I do look back at my night shifts rather fondly so if you like this thumbs up comment what you want to see next subscribe if you haven't and I will see you guys in the next one but until then stay safe and stay healthy bye